Y'all, we are taking a look at our friend Feli from Germany, and yes. this is 13 things about the USA I just can't get used to. This will be, be interesting what makes the list. We've talked a lot, uh, check out videos of, from, from Feli about stuff in Germany, but now we're getting the other side of her experiences in the US, and, what she cannot get used to. That's interesting. I think that's interesting. I, I need to know this because I, I want to know because I feel like those are the most unique things. So unique where it's like still mind blowing after some time. Anyway, ready? Yep, let's do it. Three, two, one. I've been living in the US for five years now, but there are still things about living here that I just can't get used to no matter how hard I try. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. Since August 13th, 2016 to be precise, which means that this year marks my five year anniversary of living in the US. And for that occasion, I thought it's time to reflect on a few things. So I made a list of things about the US that I really can't live without anymore at this point, which I released about three weeks ago on the actual anniversary on August 13th. Oh, Check it out okay. here if you haven't seen it yet. And I also made a list of things about living here that even after all this time, I just can't get used to. And that's what I'll talk about today. So in a way, this is the more critical, whiny, first world problems complaining counterpart to the other video. Number one is something that's been bothering me literally since day one, and it has to do with showers. I've mentioned this before in my video on housing differences, but in Germany, a shower usually looks like this or this. The shower head usually has a hose attached and you can either put it into a fixture and just stand underneath, or you can also grab it and move it around. So in Germany, we use so-called handheld shower heads usually. In the US, however, the standard that you'll find at most houses, rental places and hotels is this a fixed shower head where the pipes are built into the wall. You can usually move the angle of the shower head a little bit, but that's about it. And my question is, why America? Do you know how hard it is to clean a shower when you can't move the shower head? A shower should be one of the easiest things to clean because it already has a drain and water in it. And yeah, in Germany with a handheld shower head, cleaning a shower is really easy because you can just flush things away, but not here. Which is why I've been wondering for five years, how do Americans clean their showers? And when you build a place yourself, why do you choose a fixed shower head over a handheld one? I can't think of a single advantage. Handheld shower heads are also amazing for when you want to shower but don't want to get your hair wet, or for when you just want to shave your legs real quick, or when bathing a baby or child. Now, of course, I know that you can buy handheld shower heads in the US, but I personally can't remember seeing one in an actual bathroom throughout the whole time I've been here. The second point I've met. Okay, before that, I actually do have a handheld shower head in my house. Uh, in Nana's house. It's up in the uh, middle bathroom. Mm -hmm. The one upstairs that I use doesn't have one, but the one uh, on the level of uh, first, yeah. the main floor has one. So it it does happen, but I, I get it. I, it's not as common as it is in no. Germany or other places. No, the standard is not the removable shower head. Right. And, and I feel like what it is, is it's because it's a it's a cheap standard just and the upgrade you know for a contractor to build you know what i mean they'll mm -hmm. charge you triple to install one of those and it's not even that hard it's like you can buy them off the second you know you know what i mean you can buy them after and and put it on yourself right that's not a big deal but for a contractor to do that they'll charge triple what it costs so you know, it's usually the last thing people think about or, you know, in my case, maybe my wife would think about it more. But, you know, we have them all in the in the in the house. It's all removable, you know, yeah. uh, shower yeah. heads. But, yeah, standard. That's just a go to cheap go to, you know, especially when you're building a house, buying a house. It's like the upgrades is what adds up. And that's one of the things that usually. It just it just comes with it. It's like a kit. Right. You have a shower kit, and that's the cheap solution. Usually not that. But, yeah, it's not our go-to is the removable shower head. Yeah. 
one in an actual bathroom throughout the whole time I've been here. The second point I've mentioned before in my video about seven surprising everyday differences and one of those surprising things for me was that people in the US don't use WhatsApp. I mean, it exists, some people yeah. use it, but many Americans haven't even heard of it. And unlike in Germany, and frankly, most other parts of the world, it's not the default for texting in the US. Instead, text messages are. SMS, which have basically been extinct in Germany for like five to 10 years at this point. Now, I'm not sponsored by WhatsApp, and of course, there are also other messenger apps like Signal or Threema, but I really do wish that this wasn't the case sometimes because the features that you get with text messages simply aren't as good as the ones you get on WhatsApp. Now, most Americans have iPhones, so usually texting means using iMessage, which is when the message appears blue instead of green on an iPhone. That means that you basically are using a messenger service in a way because the message will be sent through the internet and not through regular cellular service, but even that doesn't offer a lot of features. As someone who was used to having all one-on-one -on -one and group chats taking place on WhatsApp before I came here, I was really annoyed by how complicated group texts can be here, especially when one or several members of the group chat don't have an iPhone. When I first arrived here, a lot of my fellow students used another app, GroupMe, specifically for group chats because of this. In addition to that, the search function is pretty bad compared to WhatsApp, and so is the overview of photos and other media you've sent, the feature to save messages, and most importantly, voice messages. I know that not everyone uses that feature, but I personally use that <laughs> a lot, especially with my friends in Germany, kind of instead of calling each other. You can send voice messages with iMessage, but the feature really sucks compared to WhatsApp. You can't move the cursor while listening. When you record, it'll just break off the recording if anything pops up on your phone or your screen goes black. Plus, on WhatsApp, you can now even listen to the voice message at different speeds. Now, before you guys start commenting, I know that WhatsApp is owned by Facebook and there might be valid concerns about using it, but at the same time, I see Americans posting 100 pictures of their family dinner on social media <laughs> every weekend yeah. without even thinking about privacy at all. So when Americans say that that's why they don't use it, I always find that argument a little weird. And yes, other countries have texting flat rates as well and use WhatsApp anyways. So all in all, even after five years of living here and after switching from Android to iPhone, pretty much just to make it easier for myself to text in the US, I still find it hard to get used to using text messages instead of a more convenient messenger service like WhatsApp. Point number three. All right, yeah. What's that? Uh, da, da, da. You know, there are times, especially, okay, especially living out here where I live, right? Where a, a wireless, like a Wi-Fi based communication system is better, right? I feel like you text me, I don't know when I'm going to get that. You know, I don't know when it'll come through. Yeah. Sometimes you message me on Instagram that you're... Yeah. I, I'm running late or yep. something like that. Yep. Just or, because I know it'll it'll go through. Right. It, it, but, you know, sometimes I'll get uh, it's 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 known to happen. You know, a, a lot of my family in, in let's say in South America and different in different countries. Uh, yeah. What's that? Yeah, that's that's a no brainer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even talking with people in the UK, uh, that's WhatsApp is definitely the preferred one. And and the voice when it comes to voice messages, the only uh, folks that I know that use them are uh, my black friends and my uh, friends overseas. That's yeah. the only ones I know that use the vo use voice messages. I yeah. don't know any others that do that. Yeah, no. And, and sometimes what pisses me off, though, is that when you try to freaking call me on WhatsApp, I'm like, bro. Just call me on my regular phone number because I hate that. It's have, annoying. Have I, have I done that? No, not I you. Can't, not okay, you. About, no. okay, I'm about to say. Yeah, because no. it's, it's just easier to use uh, the whatever's built into your phone already. Yeah, as the opposed to the regular number. Just, yeah, just use the regular way to call me. So, yeah. But that happens with my, my family. Like, the, when we they try to call, I'm like, bro, come on. You have my right, real number. Like, just just to do that but um yeah. no anyway yeah, yeah. i would yeah. say at, at home where i'm at if i'm if i'm uh here at the at the house with not really good uh signal yeah that's the way i, I communicate with my friends and family but if i'm on the road yeah no i don't touch that 
Yeah, yeah. Every other messaging app that she mentioned, besides, you know, iMessage and Android and WhatsApp, I had not heard of Me until neither. now. Me neither. Me neither at all. Yeah. Oh, well. Text messages instead of a more convenient messenger service like WhatsApp. Point number three is the lack of a deposit system here. To this day, I cringe a little bit every time I throw a can or a bottle away instead oh. of collecting it and returning it to the store. Even if I throw it into a recycling bin, it still kind of feels like a trash can. It also took a while for me to get used to crushing the cans like this, which you should do here because obviously it saves space in the bin, but in Germany, that's a big no-go because you need the barcode on the bottle or can to be legible when you return it to get your deposit back. For context, I should explain that in Germany, we have the Pfandsystem, a deposit system on certain glass bottles, plastic bottles, and drink cans, where you get eight to 25 cents back when you return them to the store. So basically, every German household has some spot where they collect empty bottles and cans. Sometimes it can become a pretty big pile, and then you just take them to the store next time you go get groceries and put them in this returning machine, and you'll get money back for it. Some states in the US do have a deposit system too, but but the incentive isn't quite as high to actually go and return things. Plus, I believe that in most cases you have to go to a recycling site to return them, rather than just going to any store. Here in Ohio, they don't have a deposit system at all though. The city of Cincinnati at least offers a recycling service, which is good. So everyone has a landfill trash can and a recycling one here that get emptied once a week. And you just put all different kinds of recyclable materials into the recycling can together. Which is also kind of weird for me still, because in Germany, we usually separate our recyclables by material and put it into different bins or for certain things we even have to bring it to recycling containers ourselves. So long story short, it's still weird for me to throw a plastic bottle or even worse, a glass bottle away instead of rinsing it out and collecting it somewhere. But I did actually kind of get used to crushing cans because I now sometimes catch myself do it when I'm in Germany out of habit, which sucks because as I said, you need the barcode to be working in order to get your money back. I know this is a total... All right. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much where I am there. We do have a recycle uh, system here, but like if you really research it, you realize that most most of the time they just incinerate just, everything. Yeah, they everything. Just, they just dump it into the rivers. Yeah. You know? And that's you know, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. But I was I was shocked to hear when I moved back to North Carolina that they actually do have recycling uh as yeah for what it is you're like wait what when do we get all high high <laughs> we're living that high life with the recycling bins yeah it's like man shit so it's it's yeah the recycling come on like everyone knows like we're not up to par with the rest of the world mm -mm. you know what i mean with that we just i feel like yeah we're we're lacking in that department extremely yeah, yeah, and that that change is going to be very slow. Probably in my my son's children's generation, they might have a handle on it. Yeah, and and they don't realize that how much you could do with recycle recycled stuff. You could make. Doesn't Germany like? Is it Germany or Sweden that we checked Sweden. out that actually uses it to you to power make power? Yeah, so yeah, that, that's that's crazy. great yeah because as i said you need the barcode to be working in order to get your money back i know this is a total cliche point but even after five years of living in the us i still can't really get used to the low quality of bread and dairy mm. products here i know this might sound a little snobbish but i just really miss good bread that has an actual crust and I miss good cheese, especially mozzarella. I still haven't found good mozzarella here. Even the ones in the deli section for like $10 taste like rubber, whereas real mozzarella is fluffy and airy. Same goes for yogurt and butter. Good butter is hard to find here, and so is good creamy yogurt, and quark doesn't really exist here at all. So yeah, this is a total first world problem. I'm aware <laughs> of that, but this whole video really is. But it's still something that is hard to get used to for me. The next thing- Yeah. I mean, it makes yeah. sense because uh, so many additives and preservatives and how our cattle are raised well, is well, just... It, but it makes sense, though, man. Think about where, where the heartland is over here. 
right? Like it has to have preservatives, like to to make its journey safely. Yeah. Like it's not like every, you know, the the country's so massive that food has to keep for a lot longer than it would take from one side of Germany to the other. You right. Know, and it's more feasible to have fresher pro products over there. Yeah. And also there's more local bakeries in Germany, I would assume. Like, yeah. I couldn't even tell you where a local bakery is around where I am. Yeah. No. And, and, and yeah, that's, it's just that the, the access to these things, you, you can have your art, artisan breads and cheeses there are those places but you're looking at a very hefty price for yeah. those things yeah and yeah. another thing about dairy over here is that most of it has to be pasteurized you know heated up to like 165 fahrenheit to kill germs and bacteria a cell of selling of raw milk is for in most places and probably all of the union is uh, illegal and... not pa pa you can have unpasteurized milk. oh okay you could buy but it. it is yeah you can buy it and, but it's illegal to cross state lines with it oh okay okay so it's a pa thing yeah yeah so there's more flexibility there when it comes to dairy products but again the the main difference is all the preservatives and additives in there you yep. yep. yeah i get it though i get it i mean if you if you go to one of these like smaller European countries, uh, like fresh fresh food is always accessible because it's it's easily transportable from one from farm to near you. Yeah, it doesn't most, have to stay good. And most people day shop, you know, they don't week yeah. shop or month shop, like the the like whole why walmart failed in germany thing is what, what what comes to mind yeah yeah all right number five on my list of things about the u.s that i can't get used to even after five years is people overdoing it with air conditioning okay that's partly a lie because i actually have gotten used to it in a way when i first came here i got sick from the ac all the time and for those of you who think that you can't get sick from AC, I'm gonna put a link to a recent podcast episode in the info box below where we talked about that. And I might also link an article down below, but back to the topic. I was just not used to it being so cold inside here everywhere that I was sick a lot in the beginning. And mind you, I arrived in the middle of August. So it was really hot in Cincinnati, but I always wore long pants and carried a sweatshirt with me wherever I went because I knew that anytime I'd be inside somewhere, I would be freezing. And even though I still bring a cardigan with me in the summer, I can definitely tell that my body has gotten used to it a little. I'm just not as sensitive to the cold and the temperature differences anymore. I don't think I've gotten sick from AC in years at this point, which is awesome, but I still don't like it when I basically have to put on winter clothes inside because someone sets the AC to a freezing temperature. I know I also kind of mentioned this in the last video, but why not just set it to a normal room temperature? In the summer, that'll still be so much colder than the outside anyways. This doesn't only apply to people's homes, by the way, but also to stores and businesses. I'm often inside a store shivering in the summer. Another thing that I have a hard time getting used to in this regard is when people use their central air conditioning all year round, even during fall and spring, where the temperature is perfectly nice outside, at least here in Ohio. Just open your windows, people. P.S. This really shows that I'm German because Germans are known for being obsessed with Lüften, airing out rooms. I complained about this one in one of my Oh, yeah, okay. So they... <sighs> <laughs> Where do we begin with this one? Well, she's in Ohio. Like, yeah. Okay. Like, okay, I, I get that. Well, granted, why would you want to open your windows in Ohio? So, like, you know, um, my thing is, is like, you know, down south where it gets kind of effing humid and stuffy and uh, like you don't... Open your windows is just not a thing in the summer. Mm -hmm. Besides, if you cut your AC off, granted, great idea because it saves a lot of energy. But after the house, let's say the house gets heated up because your windows are open, right? Because you want all the pollen and insects and craziness to come into your house, right? Yeah. Uh, then after all that gets in, your house is a nice, stuffy, musty, humid, 70, 80 degrees, right? 
which is miserable down south. And then you have to close all the windows, turn the AC on, and then it has to work harder to heat up all the house. No, it's better just to maintain. Just yeah. better maintain. It's easier to to feel the, the changes in temperature if you are starting already cold, where you kind of sort of want it to be. Yeah. If I want to experience all that, I'll just go outside and 100%. sit on my porch. 100%. And, yeah. And that, uh, you make a good point about all the bugs and all the insects yeah. and all the mainly uh, wasps and mosquitoes. Yeah. I want to keep them suckers well, out. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, there's screens. Yeah. Okay. There are. But shit still gets inside. Yeah. You know? And, and – that's the other thing, like, okay, Ohio. Remember that maybe things are, are different. Obviously, things are different in Germany, but we have seasons of just insane amounts of pollen and shitty air quality. So by by using the the AC, it it kind of keeps this air circulating and pumping it through the filters and stuff. You know, whether you clean your air filters or not, that's that's not, but you should. You yeah, should. people that should. rely on AC should change their air filters very f- frequently. Yeah, 100% agree. Obsessed with Lüften, airing out rooms. I complained about this one in one of my very first videos, but even after five years, my opinion on this hasn't changed, and it's about American washers, or to be more precise, top loading washing machines, which I found to be much more common here than front loaders. In Germany, it's the other way around. Now, I've never bought my own washer in the US. I've always had one in my rented apartment or a coin operated shared one in the basement or something like that. So yes, I know that if you buy one yourself, you obviously have the choice. But most households I've been to and all of the rentals I've lived in had a top loading washing machine and in my opinion they're just not nearly as good as the front loaders that I know from Germany. It might have to do with the differences in laundry detergents as well but front loaders in my experience just get your clothes so much cleaner. Plus in Germany you can choose the actual temperature that your clothes are going to be washed on in degrees whereas in the US washers usually just say hot cold or warm and I believe that they just use the hot or cold tap water instead of bringing it to that exact temperature. And the spiral thing in the middle has damaged some of my clothes before too so when it comes to washers i'll always prefer the german ones if a miele front loader doesn't get it clean nothing will another thing that yeah we have front loaders in this house and i gotta say they're much better than the uh top loaders i, I like the top load i i like the top loaders capacity yeah. i just feel like i can just blah and just dump a bunch of shit in more so than the the front loader which is a personal preference that's yeah me. yeah <laughs> you, you definitely have to do it. more loads with a front loader yeah but the trade-off is it just it's just so more clean much more cleaner especially if i <laughs> i got barbecue stand on my white t-shirt and after she was killing me with that mini skirt that definitely helps <laughs> a lot better yeah yeah there you go if you if you get that reference, you have to leave a like on the video. Oh man, you can't handle me with all my puns, like, can what? you? Yes, oh yes, all our German all our German people will understand that to a T. They're like, what? Yeah, I love that. Anyway, Google it, people. Yep, yep that I still can't get used to in the US is feeling unsafe at times. Oh, yeah. For one, this has oh. to do with me living in a city rather than a suburb or rural area. And it also has to do with gun violence in this country. I've talked about my views on gun control before and I'm not going to go into detail about that here, but it was a huge change for me and frankly still is that I always have to think about where I can and can't go in a city. Like whether I can go outside after dark or whether I can safely walk home from a bar or when I visited Chicago a few weeks ago, for example, where I can and can't go as a tourist. I'm not trying to talk about why these things are different in Germany and the US and what could be done to change the situation, but fact is that in American cities, there's generally a lot more poverty as well as violence and crime than in German cities. For example, United Nations statistics show that the homicide rate for the year 2018 
per 100,000 inhabitants was at 4.96 in the US, while it was at 0.95 in Germany. So in the US, it's almost five times as high as in Germany. Now, Cincinnati surely isn't Chicago or Detroit or New York City, but in some years, it has been listed among the top 20 most violent cities in the US, with the current homicide rate being at about 19 per 100,000 people, so more than three times the national average. Which doesn't mean that crime is something I personally see in everyday life here, but before I came to the US, I never had to take shelter because there was an active shooter around, for example. And this happened several times while I went to college here, that there was an active shooter alarm that went out to all students, and one time I was actually on campus during that time and locked myself up in a classroom together with a fellow student. Unlike him, I had never had any kind of training for a situation like that. Luckily, he did, because American students usually get prepared for these scenarios in school. I also have a lot of friends who have been attacked or robbed while walking on the streets at night here. And just a few weeks ago, I was out on a walk at like 10 p.m., which is like the only time it doesn't feel like a sauna outside in the summer. And I wasn't in a particularly dangerous area, but the next day, I found out that there was an armed robbery on the very street I was on at around the same time I was there too. I must have just missed it, but I found out the next day that the girl's phone and car keys were stolen and then they took her car. Long story short, what I'm trying to say is that it's hard for me to get used to the fact that I can't just go outside at 10 p.m. without having concerns. Just to put this into perspective, I bought pepper spray just a few weeks after I first came to the US. I never Man. had that before. And during my three weeks home in Munich just now, I went on several walks, even later at night, and I didn't even bring my pepper spray to Germany. I also took my bike through the woods at night, like I used to growing up. I used to always take the subway home late at night all by myself too, and never had to worry. So even after five years of living here, it's hard for me to get used to the idea that I'm limited in my freedom in a way. This one probably makes me yeah, that's what? that's a very complicated uh, subject right that's there. That's a that's a city problem. That's yeah. a city problem. And, like, and, and, yeah, and this is where we're we're different, uh, us two in particular, because we live out in very rural areas where stuff like that just doesn't happen as often. Yeah. And it's not just because more people have guns out here, but it's also because it's just not as populated, and you know the cost of living is not as huge as it is in cities like Detroit or uh, New York City. And, you know, there's more. And I would say something. I think you just hit on something very interesting that I never even thought about. More people have guns out where we are. I feel like per per household, there are more guns near near where we live, near our yeah. areas. I can guarantee you that. Right, right. But we don't we don't think too much about like, there's not as much robberies that no. happen. There's not as much. I mean, there's certainly drug problems around, yeah. and uh, having both my both my my grandparents and my uncle as police officers, I know about the troubles that go around around here. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not as uh, frequent as it is in the bigger cities, but again, that's another disconnect. Yeah. Uh, of you know violence, and I, you know, I, I would agree with uh, her sentiments about uh walking around and not feeling safe yeah and i feel like that's a human condition i feel like not a lot of people feel safe in cities at certain times yeah you know like yeah but that's that's the city life guys that's the city life that's what you get you 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 understand and unfortunately have to adhere to that kind of life it's it's just the way it is yeah especially in the united states and um yeah. I know I don't know what other countries. Probably like Canada, uh, at least from what I've my uh, for you page has uh, turned into in terms yeah. of uh, looking at that. But yeah, that's uh, yeah, pretty much just, the reality. Yeah, uh, you. That's why it's city. You won't feel safe in a city. Like that's that. That's why I don't go to cities. I just I I don't like not being able to just walk somewhere. And, right. And. But that's something I've I've grown up with. It's like, okay, we're here, lots of people. It's not in control. So yeah, I'm sorry. But you get that's the price you pay for living in a city where everything is close. Great. You know, that's there's pros and cons, and that is a major con for me. 
Yeah, like when we go to a concert in a city, whether it be Washington, D.C. or Baltimore, we make sure we find a hotel that's near the venue that we're going to. That way we don't have to walk as much. And when we do travel, it's in the daytime and not yeah. n- at night. Yeah, we, we know. Like There's smart ways to do it. And, you know, walking at 10 p.m. in the city at night, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Just don't do that. In, yeah. in any city, regardless mm-hmm. of where you are. Just don't do not do that. At night, nothing good happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just That's just the way I live. Yeah. Now. Maybe in, <laughs> uh, from what Feli is saying, maybe in Germany it's a lot safer. Oh, 100%, and, I bet. Yeah, yeah. So, so yep. there you go. It's hard for me to get used to the idea that I'm limited in my freedom in a way. This one probably makes me sound like a broken record because I've talked about this in several videos already and even in my recent one about 10 things I had never done before coming to the US. But if this doesn't belong on a list of things that I can't get used to, I don't know what does the American banking system. I'll keep it short this time, but I just can't get used to the fact that bank transfers aren't really a thing here, but instead you have to use a third party service to transfer money from your bank account to another one. Like when you're paying for rent or just paying a friend. In Germany, for paying utilities, or as I said, paying a friend or rent, or really any other kind of service, any kind of bills, we just send money from bank to bank. Well, here that's not very common and sometimes doesn't even really work. As I said, you'll usually have to go through another service like Zelle, for example, to do that. And I even had to get approval from my bank first before I could transfer any money. Americans therefore often just use services like Venmo or PayPal to make payments, which means that you have to connect your bank account to an additional service and cover potential fees. Many Americans also choose to do this because they think that bank transfers and giving out your account number isn't safe. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's a pretty common concern here. On top of that, people still use checks in the US, which seems pretty archaic from a German perspective. I have several friends who go to the ATM regularly to deposit a physical paycheck. Why do people have to waste their time with that in the 21st century? That hasn't been a thing in Germany my whole life. The next point on my list... Yeah, uh, the only time I can I encounter paper checks is when I do a gig. Yeah. And I, then they just pay me, write me a check for, uh, my my pay for that night. Yep. Other than that, I don't really encounter paper yeah. checks anymore. Right. And yeah, and us personally, we transfer money via Zelle, uh, with our bank, and that's yeah. just like this. This is something I haven't really thought about is bank I, transfers. I feel like I feel like we are progressing to that point. We're getting there slowly you know up to speed but there's a lot of um fdic reasons like a lot of banking internal reasons a lot of uh federal like government reasons why you know especially when there's movement of money yeah there's a lot of of scrutiny because they're trying to prevent money laundering uh, there's a lot of in built in processes as someone that's worked for three banks now. Um, right. I know that it's like it's because it's not the everyday. It's not built that those those protections, those flags are not built for the everyday person, the, the honest nine to five. But it's when the person's depositing more than ten thousand dollars and transferring ten thousand dollars. It's like there's flags to prevent that. And whether that's fair or not, that's part of the system that's built into the banking system. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, uh, whatever it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it is what it is, but that's a, that's a federal issue. That's why the banks are the way they are. Yeah. It's to combat a lot of money laundering and money crimes right there. Illegal services. Yeah. Yeah is how normal it is in the US not to believe in facts. I know this might be a little controversial for some people and this might be more of a recent development in the US, but ever since I first came here, I've been very surprised how wherever you go, people sometimes say things like, I don't believe in climate change or I don't believe in the gender pay gap. I don't believe in evolution. Or of course, most recently, I don't believe in COVID. 
You'll hear that even from very educated people sometimes, and what's so weird about that to me is that in the society I am from, facts are not a matter of belief. Religion sure is, but hard scientific facts are not. You don't get the privilege to just not believe in a fact just because it's uncomfortable. Science isn't about believing, it's about forming our opinions and strategies based on a rational analysis of the information and evidence we have at the time. Science never claims to be 100% right. Of course, the current state of research on evolution can't explain every last thing yet. Of course, scientists change their statements about COVID over time. That's how it works, but it's still the most rational rational way of creating knowledge. You base it on all the evidence and facts that you have, and when new ones come out, you integrate those and adapt the state of research and potentially also your course of action based on that. Now, I'm not saying that everyone has to be on the same page as me, but overall, I would say that this pretty much reflects the standard view in German society. And growing up there, I've never experienced it as a normal thing for people to just not believe in certain things. That's something that I still find hard to get used to in the US. The next point. Now, 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 let me, let me, let me get on my little soapbox. No, it's, uh... it's tiny. It's not really a soapbox. It's not giving a shit. Not, not caring. It's not, it's not necessarily not believing. I'm sure that shit is real. I couldn't give a shit. Yeah, you don't care. I, I, There's just I, nothing you could do about it. it yeah, it's, it's like, okay, this is fact? Probably. Probably. Do I care? Not really. So I think that we would say, oh, I don't believe in that. As more, I would... <laughs> Because, see, I choose my words a little bit more carefully. <laughs> so I would just be like, not I don't believe in it. I'm just like, I don't care. Yeah. You don't know enough to form an opinion about it. Yeah. And and do I have the time to educate myself on very specific things? It depends on what that specific thing is. Yeah. And, and you bring up a good point. It's like a lot of us are just overworked and we just don't have the time to – research a lot of this stuff and form our own opinions about it yeah or you know trust the facts about it and because there's a lot of informa misinformation that is spread because people believe their social media feeds because it yeah. only feeds you things yeah. that you want to see as opposed to the things you need to see yeah and so i'm already i just already don't believe people as it is right i'm already skeptical on every person everybody so it's like I'm going to use that as my defense and then I will learn when I do have time. I'm not yeah. saying, but I'm not pushing. What is it? My belief on you. I'm not like, bro. Like I just, I couldn't care. So whatever you're trying to preach at me, I'm just like, great, super duper awesome. I'm going to go spend way too much on groceries right now. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and, and that's another thing that she pointed out in, in the segment about feeling safe is that, we base a lot of our beliefs and views on on fear, yeah. on anger, and not on compassion because we live in a society where we're constantly fearing about a lot of things. Yeah. And that distorts our, our uh, ability to absorb information. Yeah. It's and just I, how it is. I, just, I, feel like, I, I, I feel like they don't believe in facts should be substituted for a lot of us don't care about them. And that right. is a a definitely more of a con than a pro. And that's yeah. a short shortcoming in our society, but it that's what I would say. Not necessarily not believing, just not giving a shit. Yeah, just not caring. And, and that's the living, root of a lot of shit. Right and now. living in a very individualistic society where the individual self is better than the greater good of how we live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm sure if those if the, those people are passionate about that subject, they will take the time to learn about it. But who has that time? You know what I mean? It it, it you choose the battles to, to learn about certain things. Yeah. And and just in particular, the the stuff about the Rona during that time, we were all just stuck inside, glued to our phones. Yeah. We were fed uh, so much information from so many different uh sources oh my and God. it it's like it was like sensory overload yeah. it's like what do you even believe yeah. it's better just to for your mental health just to not yeah. believe anything yeah you're just like it was too much too quick and we shut down 
Yeah. Yeah. I was just, I mean, uh, personally, like mentally, it's shut down. Yeah. It's like, We're I'm all done. way too connected. I'm it's, just over it. Yeah, it's, that's why our, our sign-off is unplug, go do something legendary. Yeah. It's not just a snappy sign-off. It's we're, we care about your mental health. Yes, touch to grass. Some, to touch some, grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't solve problems. We could just help you escape them for a little bit. But yeah, so that's our little soapbox moment. But I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying. Yeah. And I, I, I would tweak it a little bit saying not caring. Yeah. Not necessarily not believing. I b- believe and not caring. I feel like are are. Mm, t- I think they're inter. I would interchange those. I'd be like, because uh, it's not necessarily not believing. Just a lot of us couldn't give a shit about right. stuff. We couldn't care less. We couldn't. Care- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, here uh, we go believe in certain things. That's something that I still find hard to get used to in the US. The next point is expensive groceries and cosmetics. Now this is a pretty specific Germany versus USA thing because groceries are exceptionally cheap in Germany compared to other European countries, but the US really is extremely expensive in this sense. As a German, it's hard to wrap my head around the fact that as a low income person in the US, it often makes more sense financially to get fast food and takeout rather than buying groceries at the store. A normal trip to the grocery store with like half a cart full of things for the next week or two easily costs me like 90 to 100 dollars at a store like Kroger or Walmart, which is where the average American goes to get their groceries. Fortunately though, the German discounter supermarkets Aldi and Lidl have locations in the US too, which is why I personally get most of my groceries at Aldi, where I pay about 60 dollars for the same things. I only go to Kroger for certain items that they don't sell at Aldi, but every time I go to the store, and see a small bag of almonds sold for $10 or a small box of strawberries for $5, I'm like, damn, I'll never get used to that. The same goes for cosmetics like face wash, makeup remover, or face lotion, for example. I've told you guys this before, but I actually still use products from the German drugstore DM for that because even though I really tried to find good makeup remover and face lotion in the US, I failed. They were all like $7 per bottle and none of them were as good as the products from the M for like a euro. And I know that many other German expats, even in other countries, have the same experience here. Another one about how- Yeah. <laughs> uh, when was this video made? I think it was like two years ago. Uh, yeah, two years. September 2021. <sighs> Wait till she sees grocery prices now. Wow, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I remember as a kid, like going to the grocery store with my mother and filling up two grocery carts uh, and buying it for like 150. And my mom was like, oh, that's expensive. I'm like, damn. Now that's $150 can fit in two bags. Easily. Yeah. 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 I mean, I go into Walmart with like one of those baskets that handheld baskets. And how did I spend 50 bucks? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's yeah. wild. And, and that's and... and that's why it's guys, for all of you guys abroad, like it is cheaper for Americans to eat like shit than it is for them to eat healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Going to fast food or takeout. That's just it's, it's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. That's why. That's why a lot of us are uh, yeah. overweight. It, yeah. In addition to, you know, uh, lack of exercise, lack of walkability, lack of, uh, like abundance of additives and preservatives. Yeah, it, it's a complex issue. But that's one of them. Is that yep. it's just cheaper to eat like like crap. Yep. And uh, yeah, and, and I do love Aldi and Lidl. Uh, there's there is an Aldi near near uh near us uh like Mm -hmm. 20 minutes away and yes it is definitely cheaper and the food quality is definitely better in aldi and there was a Lidl where i was uh in maryland when i lived there Mm -hmm. and yeah same same concept too so man 
know that many other German expats, even in other countries, have the same experience here. Another one about houses is that even in modern houses, it's pretty common in the US to have two handles for hot and cold water at the sink, rather than having a mixer tap like you'll find it at most modern German homes. I don't quite understand why the mixer taps aren't more common here, because they're just so much more practical. I noticed this one especially whenever I come back from a trip to Germany, but I'm always kind of aware of it in the back of my mind. There is a huge amount of trash and plastic in this country. People here get takeout all the time and every meal leaves a huge pile of packaging waste behind. Many people use disposable dishes, even at home, because they don't want to clean their actual dishes. And people don't bring their own shopping bags to the store, but instead get piles of plastic bags every time they get groceries, at least here in the Midwest. Coming from Germany, where way more people try to at least avoid waste when it's not necessary, and where you have to pay for plastic bags at the store, and where plastic straws and other single-use plastic products have been banned now, it's just hard to get used to that sometimes, especially knowing that most of this trash is totally avoidable. And last but not Yep. Hey, that's cute. I get it. I understand it. That's it. Like, I get it. But it just, it just... Ugh. We do have reusable bags. I yeah. do use reusable bags when I go to Walmart or Aldi. Uh, but everything else, like with the, the whole takeout thing, yeah, it's just, it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. You're like, well, you could just use burlap for everything. Like, I get it. We could. We could. You know, and I feel like in these, especially where she, she is in, it's not, yeah, like what, Cincinnati? Yeah. Okay. City life is 100% different than out here in rural areas, right? Yeah. I, I I get that. Um, it, it just it's easier to see trash pile up in a city than out here where I live in the country. Right. So you know, I feel like it's the the pride that you have in your area, you know, and a lot of people don't give a shit about their city, and, and out here in the country, there's just more space. The, the the waste and the trash and the litter is distributed across a wider area. So it doesn't feel like it's piling up. Yeah. But the towns that I I'm in, like, they're definitely cleaner. Like you the most you'll see is sometimes the trash uh receptacle at Dollar General is sometimes overflowing. But mm -hmm. even then it's not too much overflowing. Not like New York or yeah. LA or Cincinnati. Yeah. I just, I just, that's, that's, I get what she's saying though. Could we do better? Yeah. That, but isn't that the case across the board? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we could do better. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. We could. Yeah. I'm especially knowing that most of this trash is totally avoidable. And last but not least, even after five years, I still find it weird how big of a deal alcohol is here. I mean, I'm from a country where alcohol is part of our culture, where you can legally drink beer and wine at 16 and hard liquor at 18, while here in the US, not only can people not drink legally until they're 21, but there's also such things as dry counties, for example, where you can't buy alcohol anywhere, or so-called moist counties, where you can get alcohol only at certain places, or for certain occasions. And it's also still weird to me how stores need a liquor license to sell alcohol, and you often have to go to a separate liquor store to get it, even just beer sometimes. And it's also still weird to me and a little sad that drinking in public is illegal. That means no beer by the river after you get off work, no drink while walking to a party, no playing beer pong at the park, and there's not a lot of curbside dining because of that either, because restaurants have to have a designated area if they want to do that. And even after five years, I still sometimes forget about this and accidentally have a drink in my hand outside, or I walk into a store looking for the alcohol section and then realize, oh, they don't sell that here. And that was the last point on my list of 13 things that, even after five years in the US, I can't really get used to. I hope it didn't come off as too snooty. As I said, it's kind <laughs> of a first world problem video. And of course, these things don't keep me from living here. I still very much enjoy it. All right. Well, let's talk about that alcohol yeah. thing. You yeah. go first. Uh, and I live in a rural North Carolina County and you cannot buy alcohol on a Sunday in liquor stores, ABC stores as it were, but you can buy it in 
um, in grocery stores, at uh, a gas station, and in and, restaurants, and in, and in restaurants, restaurants, you obviously. can you can have it. Um, but yeah, like there's there's a lot of hoops you got to jump through in order to even be able to sell it. And yeah, you can't drink in public. But like in Annapolis, when when I lived there in Maryland, you uh, during, especially during COVID, there were uh, more outside dining that happened as yeah. a result of that and i think it's still going on to this day because they found yeah. it was actually pretty damn good and yeah and uh uh but in new orleans you can drink out in public i think that's one of the places if you if you if you take i want to make two little points uh i think the taboo-ness of alcohol was brought around by a prohibition yeah in and, the early uh you know. 1900s uh for like four years it was uh they banned alcohol and yeah. it was pretty much amendment 18 alcohol is prohibited and it wasn't until amendment 21 to our u.s constitution that uh prohibition was revoked yeah and then and then it got alcohol and liquor is run a lot of times by the state in certain states run by the state it's like in maryland and it, it, it we have state liquor stores there's yeah. easy to it's a state it's you know what's funny it's a state job they have state outlets to buy liquor and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then on top of it, think about this. No alcohol in public, right, is, is um, I would say, prohibiting the amount of drunk drivers. Remember how much we commute as a society. Yeah. Remember very, how much like we spend behind cars and driving. Yeah. We're a very car centric yeah. culture. Uh, driving is a big part of it. There's not a lot of as much walkability so uh to combat drunk driving that that, that's why there's a lot of those laws in place yeah like you can't bring a six i see i would love personally i would love to be able to go to like the beach or a park and just have a six pack right but that's me there's going to be others that just abuse that and just get shit faced and go kill someone on the way home yeah you know Like me and my ex, when we would go to the beach, we always had like we would stick it in a soda can or uh, a, a, a a Yeti cup. We would yep. stick uh you know beer or Seltz White Claw or Twisted yeah. Tea in there and drink it there. Like what are they gonna do? Yeah. yeah, but that's what it is. That's why. That I feel like that's a big reason why, is that um it just public intoxication and preventing uh DUIs because. Because it is taboo, we tend to go overboard. Yeah, and it's then a you have forbidden kids fruit. Getting yeah. drunk, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's part of the whole. Um, you know, the drinking age is twenty one in college. Like a lot of, uh, you know, kids that age would think it's a forbidden fruit and be more incentivized to try it. Whereas in Germany, you know, like you could have beer, wine at sixteen, hard liquor at eighteen. So. There's not as much mystery around yeah. it. And think yeah. think about where the open, open, I, I always say open carry. It's not open carry, guys. Open container. Open container in the streets. Think about where that's legal. There's some in Savannah. It's, it's okay. Savannah, Georgia. And uh, obviously New Orleans. But those are all walkable. It's right. a very big bar culture, bar to bar to bar to bar. And, and and you walk there, and there's yeah. lots of hotels, lots of stuff like that. It it's primed for that to exist and thrive. Yeah, yeah. and and I would say Annapolis, Maryland, became that, especially after COVID. Yeah. of being very walkable, and there's a lot of hotels, and you know, it, it kind of not on the level of Savannah and New Orleans, but got very close to it. Yeah, and it's, so it's like there's a high probability if you're drinking and walking you're going to go to another bar and then another bar and then you probably stay in that city it is very touristy so they know that you're not going to leave you know so there's a good chance you're not driving drunk you know um and so yeah yeah i i i understand i wish it wasn't so but that's i feel like that's a big chunk of the reason of why that's out there we have those restrictions yeah yeah 
If you'd like to see a video about things that I really like about the US now, feel free to check out the first part of this video or this one where I talked about why I really enjoy living here. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, let me know in the comments what things you have trouble getting used to, either here in the US or in the country that you live in. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button and you can support my channel by becoming a patron on patreon.com slash buying me a coffee, which in my case means chai latte or beer, on buymeacoffee.com slash or by hitting the super thanks button underneath this video. Thank you guys so much for your support. For more content, just check out my Instagram and Facebook page, and I hope I'll either see you there or here on my channel for my next video. Tschüss! So, she had to go back and edit a lot then, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Oh, yeah. wow, she had a massive rebrand then. Oh, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably see it in this next video. <laughs> yeah. Let's 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 go see the opposite here. Yeah, let's see why. I think we started the right way. Let's see the third thing. Thirteen things uh, she can't get used to. Now let's see the thirteen things that. What is it? She loves. Or... Thirteen things about the U.S. I can't live without anymore. There you go. Let's All do right. it. Let's check let's it out. See. Yeah. It's been five years of me living in the US, so what do I really think of this country after all this time? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, and five years ago today is when I arrived in the US for my first long-term stay here. I had been to the US for a two-week-long high school exchange and for vacation before, but I had never actually lived here. Until August 13th, 2016, when I got on a plane from Munich to Paris and then from Paris to Cincinnati to start my exchange semester at the University of Cincinnati. And what was supposed to be just a five month long stay turn into me coming back over and over again on different visas until I received my green card in September 2019. If you want to learn more about me winning the green card lottery, I'm going to link the videos about that down below and also up here. Since that day five years ago, I haven't been in the US permanently. I spent a little over a year in Germany during that time too, but I still consider this my five year US anniversary and I think this is a great occasion for a recap, which is why I want to share 13 things, since today is August 13th, about the US with you that I don't want to live without anymore after living here for five years. I also made a list of things that I still can't get used to here in the US after all this time, which might be an even more interesting topic even, but I figured it would sound a little snooty to celebrate this anniversary <laughs> by basically listing all the complaints I have. So I'm sharing the positive things with you guys today and then giving you the other side next week. If you follow me on Instagram or watch my YouTube stories, you probably know that I'm actually in Germany at the time that you're watching this, but I'm recording this here in Cincinnati right now. Number one on my list of things about the US that I don't want to live without anymore is air conditioning. As you guys know, it's pretty normal in the US to have air conditioning in buildings, whether that's stores, public buildings, or private homes. More modern buildings even have central air conditioning usually, where the air gets circulated through these air vents that you'll find in every room. Now, why is this so special? For those of you who don't know, in Europe and actually in most countries of the world, it's actually not standard to have air conditioning inside of buildings. Now, in one of my pretty early videos, I actually said that I wasn't a big fan of central AC, and many of you guys commented that I wouldn't say that if I lived in a hotter area. Now, first of all, Cincinnati does get extremely hot and especially humid in the summer. This year it's been fluctuating a little bit more, but usually from about April to September, it's 80 to 90 degrees almost the whole time with a really high humidity which often makes it pretty hard to deal with. It'll get over 100 degrees a lot too, so like around 38 degrees Celsius. Now, of course, we also have cold winters here, but it's not like we don't deal with the heat here at all. If you look at the longitude, Cincinnati is about the same level as Ibiza in Spain or Sardinia in Italy. The reason why I said I didn't love central AC back then was because when living with other people, 
or in public buildings like at a university, Americans often really overdo it with the AC. Instead of setting the temperature to a normal average room temperature inside that would already feel cold compared to the hot summer air outside, it often feels like an actual fridge inside. I'm not kidding, people often set it to like 16 to 18 degrees Celsius, like around 63 degrees Fahrenheit, which to me is just as inconvenient as the outdoor temperature, it's just the other extreme. Plus, you usually wear short summer clothes during that time and it's pretty annoying to always basically have to carry a sweater with you in the middle of the summer because you'll need it when you go inside. So that was one reason why I said that back then and then the other reason was that I find it kind of annoying that in a bigger house when you live with your family or roommates it's all regulated centrally. So you can't turn it up or down or even off just in your room or just in the living room. If the rest of the people want the AC on you have to live with it. At most places you can usually close your vent in your room but that doesn't usually make that big of a difference. I'd personally like it better if you could regulate the temperature individually in every room. I remember that five years ago when I came here on my exchange semester in August, I was sitting in my room doing homework or something and I was wearing my warm winter clothes that I had brought for later on in the semester and I was also wearing a scarf because I found it so cold inside and I also got sick for like a few weeks straight right after I came here because the AC was so cold. But besides that, I think it's awesome that AC exists here because it helps a lot with the humidity and it's also just really really nice to be in a restaurant or even in a club with a dance floor and not have to sweat your ass off. In Germany, when it's hot, it's hot everywhere usually. On the subway, in restaurants, at school, in the office. But here you don't usually have to worry about your legs sticking to a chair when sitting down in the summer, so that's pretty awesome. Plus, ceiling fans are great too, so when I'm home in Germany in the summer, when it's actually hot there for once, um, I actually do miss both my AC and my ceiling fans. Number two. Oh, whoa, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't hurt your uh, ears, did I? No, no. Okay, no, okay. Um... Uh, okay, so AC. Like, oh, it's almost <laughs> like she made a contradictory yeah. of what she said in the things, 13 things she hates. So, yeah. Which well, is I, it? I feel like, no, I feel like she hates when it's like uh, uh, controlled by others. You know, I feel like if she had her own home, you're right. If she had her yeah. own spot, it should be a fan, you know, but when you're living in these shared housing things, yeah, I can get that. I get that. Even when someone sets it too high or too low. Yeah. That's uncomfortable. No shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. But if it's up to you and you have full rain on the, on the, on the thermometer, on the thermostat, sorry. Uh, then it's, it's, it's a pretty sweet thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and, uh, and it's, it's funny to, Think of like the longitudinal uh, equivalent is like Ibiza or something like that. Yeah, well, like Cincinnati is on the same line as Ibiza. Like pff, further from Ibiza than Cincinnati, Ohio. Fucking what? Goodness. Let's go to Cincinnati and live it up. <laughs> like, <I'm> not... <laughs> oh god. Man. We already give Ohio a lot of hate, but yeah. I'm glad you guys exist. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. Right? My uncle lives there, so yeah. Uh, yeah. got to can't clown on it too much. No, no, it's definitely one of the 50. Can yeah. It is. It is. Once, um, I actually do miss both my AC and my ceiling fans. Number Yo, two is minute. customer service. Wait a minute. Are ceiling fans not a. Like, I know they could. They, is, is it just not a thing? Is that something that you don't see a lot? In overseas Germany? i don't know that that would that's an interesting question because i feel like i was like okay you don't get the ac got it but you gotta have some sort of fan right like that's a great invention yeah please tell me y'all have ceiling fans or is that like a rarity oh my god interesting okay <sighs> 
who miss both my AC and my ceiling fans. Number two is customer service. I know that many Germans don't share this opinion, especially the ones who only know this from vacation to the US or from the media, but once you've gotten used to it, American customer service is pretty amazing. Whether it's at a store or a restaurant, overall people working in customer service just treat you really, really nicely here. They'll be friendly, make small talk with you, and usually try to accommodate every request you might have, even if you're basically asking to create a whole new meal that isn't on the menu. In Germany, you'd probably just get an answer along the lines of, that's not possible, not even a sorry in a lot of cases. Of course, this isn't always the case, but overall, this is a difference that really sticks out. And even though many Germans say that they prefer the direct and sometimes even unfriendly German customer service, I really haven't met anyone who says that after living here for a while. It definitely takes a little bit to get used to the American way because as a German, it might seem disingenuous at first, maybe even fake and over the top, but it's kind of like a cultural language that you'll have to learn how to speak and understand first and I personally don't want to live without it anymore. I've had so many people working in customer service just make my day much better just by being friendly or exchanging some nice small talk. It can even make running errands a much more pleasant experience. I just recently told a story about when I had to get my Ohio driver's license renewed on the podcast. That was a perfect example of this too so I'll just link that episode down below. Of course I know that especially in the food service industry a lot of the good customer service goes back to the staff being paid only a few dollars an hour and mainly relying on tips. But you'll experience the good customer service in other fields as well where people are paid much better, so I would argue that it's much more than just the tipping culture. Another cool thing about the US Ooh. is that there are so many entrepreneurs and creatives in this country that you can learn from. For example, on Skillshare, which is today's... Oh, okay, okay. Let me back this up a little bit. I'll cut that little part out, but... So, customer service yeah and you know what i think this harkens back to um there's just so many different places to go with your with your business right uh so if you have a bad experience at a business you will most likely go to its competitor the way that places are trained to combat that right is the customer service side of things yeah being friendly yeah. You know, going above and beyond for uh, the paying customer. Yeah, because you need that person to come back. Right. You need that person to, to only shop at your store because they've had the best interaction with management, wh wh however it goes. You need their, their, cut, their, their service back. Yeah, it's dependent. The business is dependent on repeat business. Yes. Yes, yeah. even though a lot of us would be like, F off, you know that yeah, that's they will. If you tell them to just F off or just be cold or whatever, they can just easily take two minutes out of their day and go somewhere else. Right, right. Me personally, and I'm an exception to the rules. Like, I don't mind if uh, there's a more cold uh, customer service. Yeah. I just... I, I'm just here for a certain item. I know what I want. I'm not going to make a big fuss if there's – I can't find what it is I'm, I'm looking for. It's oh, yeah. not the in, the cashier's fault. It's not the waiter's fault. It's They're yeah. just here to make a living, and, yeah. um, and, and their job is to, you know, just, you know, take my money and – uh, in exchange for a product. I, now, I get that. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not upset. Yeah. I, I feel like where our, our, our customer sh service shines and it's very noticeable, noticeable is like if you have to return something or you have to talk to a manufacturer to get something replaced. Yeah. That's where it shines. Store level, you get what you get. You know, yeah. is a grocery store going to lose my business? No. No, yeah. it's not. Like, uh, so I don't like my my bar for that customer service is so low. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like if I go to a restaurant called Denny's, I'm lucky if they have ice cubes. Like, yeah, I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like whatever. But um, but definitely in the manufacturing side of things, in the return side of things, in the warranty side of things customer service at least over here has been very helpful and they 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 leap over hoops and bounds to try to make your purchase worth it yeah yeah 
So. Yeah. <laughs> creatives in this country that you can learn from. For example, on Skillshare, which is thousand of my subscribers, so click the link in the description box below, we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. The next point on my list is convenience. I feel like this one is a pretty obvious one, but the US really is the country of consumption and convenience. You need some milk, a new bathing suit, and a new lamp for your living room? Just go to Walmart or Target or any of those stores and you'll find everything in one store. Plus, there's most likely also gonna be a Starbucks in there too. You're in a hurry, but you need to stop by the store for a couple things? No worries, just run in, check out the self-checkout machine, and usually you don't even need to bring your wallet, just pay with your phone. If you realize at midnight on a Sunday that you're out of tomatoes, no worries, just go to the grocery store. Many yeah. of them don't close until 1 a.m. or never. And stores aren't closed on Sundays like they are in Germany. What a dream. Or you can just have the tomatoes delivered or order takeout from a restaurant with services like Uber Eats or DoorDash or Grubhub, etc. And of course, a big part of this whole convenience thing is also the fact that here in the Midwest, you can just drive to places and you'll usually find parking pretty easily. And the parking spots are huge compared to Germany and so are the streets. Driving here in Ohio is just so relaxing compared to driving and especially parking in Munich. Is it environmentally friendly? Definitely not. Is it convenient though? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Along with the big- <laughs> That's the pill you gotta swallow. What yeah. about our earth? Like, I don't give a shit. I need to park and get my milk. Like, yeah. Earth can wait. Like, that's just she, like- that's she, felt so, she felt so disgusting saying that. I can just <laughs> I, hear it. I know. It was like, oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this. But convenience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also a lot of those delivery apps because someone is driving to you. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't help the environmental effect. But, yeah, you pretty much get anything you want yeah. whenever you want it. Even in the rural areas, you could still drive 30 minutes to the city and go get it and get yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. And That's you can it. find parking. Oh, and well, actually, well, yeah, for most, for for most. Yeah, guys. you own a big ass truck. Uh, yeah, so. it, yeah, I I stay away from the city because of that. Yeah, but yeah, that's she pretty much hit the nail on the head, and all of it is available in a Walmart or a Target. It's, Isn't that crazy? And they yeah. usually have pharmacies in there too. At least Target Farm. does. Yeah, yeah. In my Walmart, uh, there is a, a a pharmacy and a Subway. And a, a hair salon, and a places you could go uh, get your taxes filed. Yeah, like what? Like yeah, that exists. Oh, I, say oh it, it, it's, it's, it's a one-stop shop, and that is that's why I love her. Almost, it's almost like naivety, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Just run in real quick, get what you need, run out. No, that doesn't happen. <laughs> and run in real quick. We won't see you for a week. Like, there is no quick target, just jump in, yeah. jump out. Yeah, one of my first jobs was as a target cashier. And if I had a dollar for every time a customer would come through my line and say, man, I only came in here for three things, and they had, like, 57 things, yeah. Yeah. I could retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. So I, I love the fact that she thinks she can just go into Target real quick and just pay with her phone to come out. no. No, it's not that simple. You mm -mm. get trapped. You stay there. You have to change your name. It, like it's just it. That's what it is. That's what block these... off your whole day. <laughs> block off your whole day, man. Yeah. <laughs> not is it convenient though? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Along with the big streets on parking spots also goes the fact that there's just a lot more space in this country than in Germany. Everything is huge here and I especially enjoy that when it comes to living spaces. Houses, bedrooms, closets, fridges, all of that is just so much bigger in the US and especially here in Ohio, living space is still relatively inexpensive compared to Munich, which is the most expensive city to live in in Germany. Oh. Here, when people say that they have a tiny bedroom, it's still big for German standards usually. And and in Ohio, you can buy a regular house with, let's say, two or three bedrooms for like one to two hundred thousand dollars, while even just an apartment with three bedrooms in Munich is usually over a million dollars. The fifth thing that I really hold on, hold on, hold on, those Damn. are like New York City prices. Yeah. So I, 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 that's 
where Oktoberfest is, so good to know that whenever I do go over to Oktoberfest, I might be shelling out a few more euros than or, I thought. Or buy a tent. Buy a fucking tent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Had, had to look at rewatch re re that sober. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. If you know, you know. It's probably linked at the end of the video. Bedrooms in Munich is usually over a million dollars. The fifth thing that I really wouldn't want to miss about the US is how easy it is to connect with people here. Americans in general are just so open to meeting oh. new people and making new friends. You can combine friend groups pretty easily if you're having a party or a barbecue. And especially as someone who's new to a country, it's a lot easier to find friends than it would be in Germany where friend groups tend to be a little more closed off and long term. Plus, I feel like Americans are great at genuinely being interested in another person's story and finding common ground, even if you're really different people on the surface. Number six is pretty simple. Yeah, I would say that we're very more open to at least hear your story and yeah. we'll sit and talk with you for a little bit. And de definitely in the more rural areas, like yes, you'll, you'll definitely we'll hear you out about things where well, the, the stereotype that you're we're, we're all closed off and you know, don't have uh, any, um, we're not that social. That's, that's kind of BS. Yeah. That's 100% BS because you're taking someone that lives in this. That's, that's more so city life. And yeah, again, yeah. city life does not reflect all of the U S right. Yeah. You go down past the, the Bible belt down South, man, you could talk for hours with a stranger at a gas station. Yeah. Yeah, that's a totally common thing around here is, you know, talking to a complete stranger for hours that there's there are no strangers. There's just friends you haven't met yet. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and it's the whole basis of both our channels, ETG and ETS, is just being open to other cultures and, you know, just trying to learn about them. Yep. You know? Yep finding common ground even if you're really different people on the surface number six is pretty simple but it has become an absolute essential part of my life kettle corn it's a mix of sweet and salty popcorn and it's the absolute best snack in the world the best store brand for kettle corn is boom chica pop by the yes. way they're not sponsoring me even though they should so if anyone working for Boom Chica Pop is watching, shoot me an email. But jokes aside, in Germany it's actually standard to eat sweet popcorn at the movie theater. So if you don't specify otherwise, ordering popcorn means ordering sweet popcorn. No. Not even mixed, just sweet. In the US, popcorn is salty by default and often has a butter sauce on top. So it's more of a salty and buttery snack. And they'll also put things like cheese powder on it which has grown on me, to be honest, but the creme de la creme is still kettle corn. Number seven. Okay, okay. I didn't realize that sweet popcorn was the standard in Germany. That hurts me. I hate sweet popcorn. I really? hate sweet popcorn. I don't know what it is. I, I, You know what? You know why? It's because my first introduction to popcorn was at a movie theater, right? Like that's like movie theater, movie right. scenario. What's that type of popcorn? Usually buttery. Butter and salt. And that became the standard. Yeah. And then when you start fucking adding sugar and stuff, I'm like, nah, man, I need butter. And you know what? To combat the sweetness, extra butter. Yeah. <laughs> I I love both. I, I think they both are great. Um, Nana loves the Boom Chicka Pop. Like, she has that a, a big old bag of that oh, yeah? upstairs right nice. now. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, most of us are used to the salty buttery one. Yep. Um, but both are great. Yeah. I you know, more for me. More yeah, there for you more go. There sweet you go. popcorn that's, for that's me. That's fine. You know, my wife loves the, the sweet popcorn too. I can't I can't I can't do it. I try, it's just overwhelming because I hate sweets. Right. I'm right. not you're not you, you don't have a sweet guy. tooth. Mm -mm. No, and then, and you and you see me just hawking down sodas all the time on here, and in fact I've done it like I I have three cans like right here with me. <laughs> this is why I drink a lot of water to yeah to combat that yep. yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> 
is carpet in houses. It's a lot more common in the US to have carpeted floors in the living room, but especially in the bedrooms than it is in Germany. In Germany, that's a rather outdated thing and you won't see a lot of houses with carpet anymore these days. You'll mostly find hardwood floors there, parquet usually. And that's because most Germans prefer hardwood floors and nowadays a lot of Americans do too, but I love how common carpet is here because I just find it so much more cozy to wake up in the morning and walk on soft, fluffy carpet rather than walking on cold and slippery hardwood floors. One big th Yeah, I mean, the carpeted floors definitely have a lot more upkeep with them, but I, I guess it's just something I take for granted. I, yeah, I, I, I am a fan of carpet in the, in like, in the bedroom areas, but yeah. like the main use areas, like, well, obviously the kitchen would never, ever have carpet. But Hell like, no. but like living rooms and stuff and common areas where everyone walks. Eh, that's I like that being hardwood or laminate flooring or tile flooring. I like the, like something hard that you can easily clean. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that was the big thing is cleanliness. Yeah. And and but definitely hall like hallways. Yeah. Like at least our, our steps. I love carpeted steps because they don't hurt as bad when you fall down them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, especially <laughs> after a few of these. <laughs> yeah, right? So, oh, yeah, no. Or if you oh, step carpet. on a Lego. Or if you step on a Lego, there's a little bit of cushion. Because, yeah. oh, my God, I couldn't imagine how pierced my feet would be if bedrooms weren't carpeted. Oh, like, if, it, if a Lego just it was on a hardwood floor and I stepped on it, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's yeah. a lot yeah, of people would die. That's, that's your day. That's no. your day. <laughs> Just pack it in. That would be my villain arc. That would be the start of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> thing that I'd like for Germany to adopt, so this is my official request Germany, is the amount of pools that you'll find here in the US. Yes. Not just private pools that you'll find in someone's backyard, but neighborhood pools or pools in apartment buildings. That's not a common thing at all in Germany, but here, if you live in the suburbs or a more residential neighborhood, it's super common that there is a public pool that everyone living in the neighborhood can use. And many apartment complexes have a pool too, kind of like a hotel. There are even student apartments buildings with pools here and needless to say in the summer that's just really awesome you either have a pool in your own neighborhood or you'll go to the one in your friend's neighborhood or building and they often have public grills too the next thing that i love oh yeah public pools i had one where i was in uh in maryland when i lived there um but definitely not in rural areas that's not as common as public pools i mean private pools yeah but um i I've never lived anywhere uh, other than in Annapolis where mm. I had a pool that okay. was accessible to me. What about okay. you? Oh, yeah. No, uh, in the various communities that I've lived in, um, married, right, uh, pools were a thing. Community pools were a thing. Uh, growing up, I had a pool in my house. At my okay. house in, in, in Damascus. Oh, okay. So that, that was a... That was a pool that was used a lot. Um, so, yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them at all to own. No, no way. No, no way. That's a lot of upkeep. It's expensive to have an effing pool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm with you. And so, so, but yeah, I, I get it. They're, they're just, they're just more common here. You know, even when you, let's say when you fly, it's, it's very interesting because when you fly into the area, and you're about to land at the airport, just take a look. It depends what time of day you're traveling. But during the day, you fly in, just look at the neighborhoods, and you see all the pools. You see all the pools. There's so many. It's not It's not uncommon. Yeah, it's very common. Here in the US in my daily life is the bar culture. I feel like overall it's a much bigger bar slash pop culture here than in Germany, especially compared to Munich, where we don't have a lot of bars where you just go in and get a drink at the bar and then stand around or sit on a bar stool. Most places have table service, and if you want to go party party, you'll usually go to a club where you'll have to pay a cover fee and where the party doesn't really start until 1 a.m. or later. Here in the US, I just love how many, let's call them non-binding bars bars there are where nobody cares whether you order something or not and you can just 
get a beer for three dollars or at least here in Cincinnati you can and you can hang out and many bars even have a dance floor too. No cover fee and since in Ohio and many other American states the sale of alcohol has to end by 2 a.m. most bars close at 2 or 2 30 a.m. Sounds early and you might wonder why would I like that? Well I like it because it means that people start partying much earlier and I get to go to sleep at pretty much my normal sleep time because I'm a night owl and I don't have to ruin the entire next day like in Germany Germany, where you often stay out until 6 a.m. or later because Ooh. the party doesn't even really start until late at night. Plus, oh going out here is God. much cheaper since a lot of the bars simply have a dance floor and you don't need to pay a cover fee, so it's more flexible, better hours in my opinion, and a lot cheaper. Plus, I like the music much better too. I'm not really into EDM and in my opinion, Germans don't have great taste in music because they don't have a lot of rhythm, so everything is always just boom, 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 like the same beat the whole night. So I personally just like the music here in the US a lot better. Another really important- <laughs> Oh, man, that just makes me happy. I bet she had, she made a lot of friends with that one. But yeah, um, yeah. God, 6 a.m. bro, I am dead. I am the... dead. I am dead. If I stay up at, 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 at 6 a.m., it's because I've been running for my life. Yeah, and, and the party's starting at 1 a.m.? No. Nah, Look, man. Those days are past me, man. Yeah. Maybe and a 19 year old Daniel would have been like, hell yeah, that's right. We live forever. Not me. Not now. Fuck that. Mm -mm. But, and then the, like, yeah, I, I didn't realize that that was a thing. Like, not a thing in other um, countries where the bar culture is, uh, you know, $3 beer and no cover charge. Uh, I've learned maybe it's more similar to, to Britain and Ireland. Uh, where we Maybe. are as well. Um, cheap beer, good vibes, and, you know, <laughs> better music because yeah. we have... Uh, <laughs> we're, there's not as... Not just white people around here. Yeah, I just... I feel like it's it's because... I think the... the I think it's because alcohol was taboo that it becomes a desirable thing. Yeah, because yeah. it's like something special. I mean, I don't know. I hate saying that, but it's because of the mentality behind alcohol. Yeah, that gives our bar culture, or sports bar culture, or or not because we don't have pub culture. We have our own bar culture. Yeah, here. too many flat screens. Basically. Too many flat screens, and it's just a social event. You know, if you're yeah. gonna go watch a game, watch a fight, go to the sports bar because there's thousands of TVs. Food is consumable, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can socialize, you know. Right. That and that's that's that. I like that. And sometimes there are there is live music. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, listen to the song "I Love This Bar" by Toby Keith. Ooh. You'll get American uh, bar culture immediately. Pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> good in that song. Yeah, yeah one is Mexican food. With Mexico being right across the border and Mexicans being the biggest immigrant group here, you'll find Mexican restaurants everywhere, which we don't really have in Germany. Now, before you guys comment, oh, but it's not real Mexican food, it's Tex-Mex, it's Americanized. Well, first of all, that tastes really good too, but <laughs> even in Cincinnati in the Midwest, there are numerous authentic Mexican restaurants as well. I've never been to Mexico myself, but if Mexicans who live here say that it's authentic, I'll believe them. You don't have to travel to certain <laughs> states to find good Mexican food. It's really all over the country. The next point is- Yeah, yeah, that's like man. our biggest uh, assimilated culture oh, besides like man. Italian is Mexican. And yes, it has Man. The, the like tacos, burritos, quesadillas. They have more in common with Texas than they do actual Mexico. And and the, I'm fine with that too. Like she just said, I'm fi I don't care what it is. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. Even the bottom of the barrel Taco Bell uh, I, still hits. Yeah, really like, nicely. Fight us. We have the that is the best. Like I I don't care who you are. I am so glad that is in our our arsenal like of of food places is authentic and tex-mex i you can't lose yeah it's it's perfect it's perfect yep, exactly this is something that i've talked about a little more in detail in this video but i really like the positive mindset in the american culture this is a generalization of course but overall americans have an attitude that's much more 
let's try it, what could go wrong, rather than Germans who are often more like, why would we try that? Something could go wrong. I like to summarize it like this, when Germans would say, why are you doing that? Americans are often more like, why not? Which is something that I personally just really enjoy because I find it to be a much more supportive environment to be creative personally and live your life how you want to live it and not how other people expect you to live it. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if it weren't for that positive and encouraging mindset here. Number 12. Hell yeah. Well, the best stories come out of that kind of mentality. Yeah, of basically, fuck it. Why yeah. not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, who cares? We'll, we'll still, you'll still be, be, be able to get up and go to work the next day. Yeah, or, Why or not? not. But that's or a not. great story too. Yeah, it's still a great story with basically Leroy Jenkins hit. Yep, yep. Like, hey, why do that? Yeah, why not yeah. do that? Try that new food. Uh, go to that show. Talk to that girl. The worst thing could happen is you die. Like, come on. Yeah, we're all gonna die eventually. One hundred percent. We're not here for a, a a long time. We're here for a good time. Boom. Mm-hmm. Tell that to our people on ETS. Oh, 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 oh man. <laughs> Jeez. Off on my list is flexibility, by which I mostly mean that compared to Germany, when it comes to moving or your job, things are a lot more spontaneous and you can decide things much more last minute here. Like while in Germany it's common that you have to give a three months notice to quit your Whoa. job or being what? fired, it's only a two weeks notice here, even for salary jobs. Which obviously has a lot of downsides too, but I kind of like how it makes life a little bit more flexible. Even more so with housing, if you rent a place, it's usually a one-year lease in the US. If you want to stay after that year, you can usually resign the lease for another year, but it kind of encourages a lot of people to move a lot, which again might be perceived as something negative, but I personally like how it's normal for people to move around a lot and thereby keep their lives interesting and keep their options open as to where and how they're gonna live in the future. In Germany, leases are usually unlimited and people move a lot less in general. If you buy a house in Germany, you usually plan on staying there permanently or at least for a really long time, whereas Americans often just buy houses and then sell them again after a few years to move somewhere new. And last- Yeah, uh, a couple of things on that. One, with the houses, they've become a lot more expensive and the way we're worked a lot, it's like, you know, you get a 30 year mortgage, you're basically gonna be there for a long time. Or, or, or you're, it's either you're gonna be there for a long time or you're selling within five years. Yeah, yeah, you got to flip it and sell it for, for more yep. than what you bought it for. Yep. And the, so there is that. And three yeah, months? Uh, three Sorry. month notice. That's nuts, dude. Hell, the culture now is just to not even put a two week notice in. Because if you put a two week notice in, a lot of employers might just fire you on the spot. Which is now the best case scenario. So you yeah. can just get that, get that, get that government money. But yeah, um, for real, like yeah. I, I, that's too much. That's a quarter. That's a quarter of yeah, a year. A, th a three month notice. That's that's uh, what what that's unfathomable here. Three month notice. I mean, I guess if you're in like in a in a very big, um, I could see that if you're in like a very technical position somewhere, and like if you're in like a a um, what's it called, an essential position they have to bring someone in you have to train them to be proficient yeah. yeah and then you leave yeah that would be the more of the case in like government positions yeah. or like high very high up government positions where you know quitting on the spot would make everything just fall apart yeah. really quickly yeah but but like for an accounting firm something like that you know you're very replaceable three, in that three months is a clown number like yeah. that should not hey boss i might quit when in three months oh, jesus yeah yeah in america you'd be like won't you just leave now uh, bye like hey by the way i'd left my two weeks when i uh, put my two weeks on the napkin i handed in yesterday so i'm out bye <laughs> yeah like you should have noticed two weeks ago or three months ago in this case that i was going to quit yeah there's my two weeks. You should have you shouldn't know those two weeks ago. <laughs> wow. And and like the whole flexibility thing, like 
in both of our channels, it's been a lot of people still hold the sentiment that Americans don't travel. We do travel within our own country because yeah. there's so much there. Yeah. That's so uh, like there's beaches, mountains, rural like, uh, flat areas. Yeah. There's big cities, small towns. Like we're basically a melting. We are a melting pot of yeah. so many different countries in one. So any, we do travel, but we don't need a passport for it. Yeah, uh, any kind of like, any kind of, I guess, atmosphere or what would I would look geography you were looking for to find, we have it. Yeah, with the exception yeah. of like super duper rainforest, but we have swamp marsh. We have shit with alligators. In Florida, it. Florida. We have Florida. Yeah. Right, and we have the Keys if you're looking for tropical. And we yeah. have F in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. So. And you don't need a passport. You don't need yeah. a passport. Yeah. And and each individual state is basically its, its own, own country, country with its one, own culture, its one, own sports teams, its own 100%. cuisine, its own yep. musical artists and yep. things that come out of that. So, yep. yeah, we're not exaggerating when we say it's, it's a big country yeah, and there's so much you could do here. Yeah, F and massive. Yep. Whew. Sorry. Let's, let's put more point on here. There you go. Last but not least, a thing that I could have included in my point on convenience, but I felt like it deserved to have its own point on the list, is drive throughs One of the most American and most convenient things ever, there are really drive throughs everywhere here, for fast food restaurants, obviously, but also for Starbucks and other coffee shops, pharmacies, banks, so like drive through ATMs, drive through vaccines, which is how I got my COVID vaccine, drive through convenience stores, or even liquor stores, and apparently there are even drive through wedding chapels. You can definitely <laughs> call it lazy, but it's also part of that American convenience that has kind of seduced me in a way. It's just so comfortable to be in your own car, not worrying about what you look like really, waiting in line while sitting down with your own music, but still getting food and completing other errands. And that wraps up my list of 13 things about the US that I don't want to live without anymore after living here for five years. I think we can end here, but yeah. those drive throughs man. The Last thing, the drive through wedding chapel. That's more that's of a Las Vegas, Vegas thing. That's not everywhere, guys. That's not that's everywhere. That's one state, probably 10 or 12 of them exist in the country, yeah. in that state. Yeah. Everything else she mentioned, you know, food, coffee, pharmacies, liquor, vaccines, when that thing I, was going on. It's been since I lived in College Park that I've... I've been through a, a uh, to a liquor store with the drive through in a long time. A long yeah. time, like a decade maybe. Or right. More. But it does but ha happen. They do exist. Um, yeah. Yeah. Imagine the absolute meltdown that would happen in this country if they outlaw drive throughs. Oh Could my God. You, the restaurants would shut down, or sorry, fast food chains would suffer. Yeah. Suffer so much. If you had to actually get out of your car and go get your food, it like, would probably places down. Yeah, that was loud. yeah. That's a part of our culture is yeah. not only car culture, but drive-through convenience. Yeah, yeah. like there's a, there in in Mountie, there is a drive-through convenience store too, where you can you know you know alcohol and yeah yeah you do that. Next what? time you come down here, I'll show you. Oh where my it is. god, that is is it open 24 hours? Uh, I think it's close to like 10. But, still not bad, man. Yeah, but 24-hour ones is sheets. But uh, the alcohol is closed off at 10? midnight. Midnight? All right. But land is free home wow, of the brave, baby. I love that, man. But yeah, no, I mean, fast, th that's how big of an issue it is. If they were all to be illegal, this country would be brought to its knees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost, almost full stop. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck. Oh, man. Anyway. <sighs> but hey, the, these were both great videos. Feli, uh, thank you for making them. They're yeah. great. Uh, it's good to get both sides of the coin. What, yes. Start off with what you don't like and then end what you do like. That way we can end on a positive note. Yes, 100%. And, That's the way yeah. to do it. Yeah, this is, this is a great weekend upload, man. Oh, yeah. Just, we uh, should totally put on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll think. Let us know down below. While you're yes. at it, consider subscribing and watching another video. Yeah. And what's we'll Daniel? I Unplug and enjoy the rest of your day. Exactly. And we'll see y'all next time. Later, guys. Fellas, we could be that mistake.
do this. <laughs>